Hello, everybody. It is time for a polling update here in the state of Texas for the 2024 election coming up. Uh, we have a new poll from the University of Texas. I will break that down after I jump into these numbers of Trump versus Biden. Then we'll talk about Ted Cruz's Senate race as well. So right now, a University of Texas, uh, they released a poll recently, and Trump leads Biden 48 to 41 percent with the total of, uh, when you look at the real clear politics uh, total average, he is ahead by 8%, which is actually pretty substantial, and I will tell you why in a second. He's leading 48.7% to 40%. And you can see here from uh, other recent polling data, University of Houston has Trump ahead by 9 Emerson had him has him up by 8% uh, last month, 49 to 41 now, this is polling data going back uh, all the way to September, and Trump's lead looks to be about anywhere from seven to nine points. And that is the same margin that he won in 2016 against crooked Hillary uh, Clinton. Uh, he won by about 800,000 votes, 9%. And some people think, well, 9% is not a lot. It actually is. And when you take a look at this polling here from 2020, you will see why uh being up by seven to nine points is, is pretty substantial. In 2020, the polling had Trump up by an average of 1%, according to Real, uh, Real Clear Politics. He ended up winning by almost 6%. So the polling was a, a bit off. And if we look at the final results in 2020, Trump beat Biden by over 600,000 votes, 631,000 votes at about 6%. So the polling data was off by around 5%, and he won by a pretty substantial margin in the grand scheme of things. Now, with him being up by 8% right now in the polling, uh, my prediction is that he is going to win by about the same margin as he did in 2016. It's going to be a very uh, polarizing election. Let's just say Biden is a nominee. Uh, Trump brings out a lot of voters on both sides, but ultimately he will win Texas by anywhere from 8 to 10% is my prediction. Uh, looking at about a million votes, uh, you know, a million vote gap there, which is pretty large. And that's very good. Uh, in 2020, there was a lot of things that the Zuckbucks did here in Texas to swing the election. And Trump, and they took about 200,000 votes uh, away from Trump and shifted towards Biden, according to data, or it, it, it picked up about 200,000 votes for Biden with the, what they did with the mail-in ballots and things like that. And Trump still won by over 600,000. So despite all of that nonsense, he still swamped Joe Biden here in the state of Texas. Now we're going to look at the Senate race with Ted Cruz. Uh, we know what happened in 2018. Beto O'Rourke, the three-time loser, uh, put together a great campaign, raised a lot of money, and he got he got within 2.6 percentage points of Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz only won by about 200,000 votes. Very close race. A lot of people were uh, thought that was the beginning of the end for the state of Texas, but from what I have seen since then, that was just a one-off. Beto ran a very good campaign, and Ted Cruz didn't take him seriously up until the last three months, which was, which was a huge mistake. He should have taken, uh, he, he should have kept his foot on the gas from the beginning, kind of like what Abbott did in 2022 when Beto challenged him. Uh, Abbott kept his foot on the, well, I guess he kept wheeling with the, the wheelchair in that race, Um because he, he knew that he didn't want to take anything for granted. So he ended up winning by uh, about 900,000 votes, about 11%. So Ted Cruz is actually in pretty good shape right now. You look at uh, his race against the potential racing is Colin Allred, who will likely be the nominee for the Democrat side. He is ahead by uh, about 8% overall. And the most recent polling has him up uh, 14 points. 32, 42 or 36 in the University of Texas poll. And then you have this other poll here, National Public Affairs, a, a tied race. But the rest of the polling favors Ted Cruz uh, 
you know, pretty good. He has one, he's up 16. The University of Texas uh, from December, he's up 16. Another one, he's up 7%. He's up 9%. The University of Houston polling. Uh, this is very good news for Ted Cruz. He's going to have Trump at the top of the ticket and Ted Cruz below that. And they're, they're going to do both very controversial figures. Ted Cruz is hated by a lot of people. Trump is hated by a lot of people. But ultimately, you're going to have uh, people in the state of Texas coming out in droves to get Trump across the finish line. And he's going to carry Ted Cruz, who has a name for himself as well. He's not just some no-name politician. Ted Cruz is very popular. Uh, he's known nationally. He's, you know, he's popular among Republicans, and he's hated by a lot of Democrats. So if we go to Roland Gutierrez, Gutierrez, who is another challenger, Ted Cruz is beating him substantially by uh, 12%. So if he ends up being the nominee, this will be a very... Uh, good race for Ted Cruz as far as, uh, you know, it's, it's going to look good for Ted Cruz. He's going to raise a lot of money, but you're going to have a lot of outside money coming in to defeat Ted Cruz. Soros is trying to knock him out. Uh, Chuck Schumer has said he wants to knock, you know, <laughs> he's targeting Texas, but the people of Texas are going to come out in droves, and I believe it's going to be in record numbers. We saw in 2020, I believe it was about 11 million Texans voted. And it was very, uh, it was a polarizing election. But Donald Trump received 5.9 million votes, a record. I think you can see that again. He would get anywhere between 6 and 6.5 million votes, in my opinion, against the Democrat nominee. At this point, I think it'll be Joe Biden, just my opinion. And uh, Ted Cruz is going, it's going to be a contested race, but... I think the he could likely win about five to six percent, which would be a substantial margin because Texas has such a large population. Winning by five or six percent, he'll win by hundreds of thousands of votes there. Now, uh, let's break down these numbers here from the University uh, was that University of Texas. Uh, you know he's trouncing Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley has no shot here in the state of Texas. We'll get into that in a second. But it says uh, a new University of Texas poll, uh, uh, Texas project, uh, poli- sorry, politics project poll found that only 43% of Texas voters have a favorable view of Joe Biden. That seems kind of high to me. Who are these 43% of people that have a positive view of Joe Biden? And 50% hold an unfavorable view across party lines. Okay, so averaging out, you know, Democrats think he's doing a great job. Republicans don't. That's no surprise there. So that's why it brings up that average to 43%. Uh, nearly half of Texas voters, 49% hold a favorable view of Trump compared to 45% who don't. So he's he's above water here in the state of Texas, which is good. The polling data is very favorable here in Texas for Trump. Among Republicans, Trump's approval rating has been above 80% since February of 2017. Democrats have held a favorable view of him since... Uh, December 2022, 12%. Since then, it's, it's increased to 15%. So as uh, Democrats view him more favorably in the past seven, uh, you know, since the, six, seven years. Yeah, now we're in 2024. <laughs> um, let's keep going here. Texas voters have a 44% unfavorable view of uh, former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, with 28% expressing a favorable, favorable view. Republican voters in Texas prefer Trump to Haley by an overwhelming 80% to 9%. Wow. Uh, you know, Ron DeSantis obviously dropped out. He received 8% on the vote, but he's beating Haley by 80% to 9%, a 71% margin. Uh, oh, watch. Super Tuesday, you're going to see Trump cakewalk here in Texas. We're going to run away with the nomination. Nationwide, actually, is going to is it's not even going to be close uh, for the Republican nomination. Now we're going to get into issues that Texans are concerned about. Now, first, when it comes to the question of leg- the legitimacy of the 2020 election, the poll found that 58 percent of Texas voters said Biden legitimately, legitimately, I'm sorry, won the presidential election. 31 percent say he didn't. 12 percent say they're unsure. 
But among Republicans, that is 59% say that Biden did not win the election uh, legitimately. 23% say did, 18% said they're unsure. And that compares to August of last year when 69% said Joe Biden did not win the election in a, in a fair, uh, fairly. You know how I feel about that. Among Texas voters, border security is the most important issue with 24%. Immigration, 18%. Political corruption, 11%. You're seeing that play a factor because of a lot of corruption up in D.C. And people want the swamp to be drained. Inflation has actually become less important of an issue uh, for America, for Texans and American citizens overall. I'm not saying it's not important, but you're seeing polling data out of Ohio, not Ohio, Iowa, and New Hampshire in that race for the, uh, the, the Republican primary, polling data showed immigration to be the top issue over inflation. The most important issue facing the country is inflation prices, 13%, and immigration, 12%, the economy, 11%, border security, 10%. Now, it was, there was a time when inflation was by far the most important issue, but with the, the, the spotlight that's been put on the border, thanks to Governor Greg Abbott sending people to sanctuary cities, his fight against the federal government, you're seeing that issue become much more, uh, you know, ex- expanded. That issue is becoming much more apparent to uh, people across the country. When it comes to border security, 65% they support Texas Governor Greg Abbott constructing and or repairing walls or physical barriers at the Texas-Mexico border compared to 28% who oppose it. A majority, 57%, also said they support Texas installing buoys to the, in the Rio Grande River. 36% said they don't. A greater majority said, uh, 66%, 66% said they support deploying additional state police and military resources to the border compared to 27% who said they opposed doing so. When it comes to the economy, 39% of voters polled said they were worse off economically under the current administration. 33% said they're about the same. They're about the same. 27% said better off. Yeah. Um, So there you go. The, The rest of the polling data is about the Senate race, which I've touched on. But that is where Texas voters stand right now in the current climate. And just to uh, wrap this up, Trump will win the state of Texas. Uh, they're going, they're going, there's going to be a lot of effort to stop Trump here to turn Texas blue. They try every year and they fail. And they're going to continue to fail to turn Texas blue because a lot of r- rural voters uh, are going to carry the state. You're going to see margins at 70, at 70%. 80%, you know, 70, 30, 80, 20 in rural areas, in some cases 90, 10. In the big cities like Dallas, you might see 30, 35% in favor of the Republicans. You know, as long as the big cities are in Texas, besides Austin, you know, if it's 60, 40, 65, 35 in Democrats' favor, um, that's actually not bad. I mean, in places like Dallas and Houston, and San Antonio, Fort Worth is more conservative, obviously, but those other three big cities are different than places like Los Angeles or New York, where Democrats win 85, 90% of the vote, about 85% of the vote. But if you can keep it here, Republicans getting about 30 to 40% in the big cities, they were in good shape. As you saw in 2022, Governor Abbott won, I believe it was 40%. He, he received about 40 Maybe 44% of the vote. It was actually pretty high. And that's actually not bad. So he did a great job down there in in Houston, the Harris County area as well, overall. But I'm going to leave that right there. Don't forget about early voting until March 1st. And then Super Tuesday is March 5th. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Take care.